Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Ignite Radio Live, where we are in our fifth season of the Family Road Trip Podcast. You are with Greg and Stephanie Schleter in two amazing, heroic couples that you will meet very shortly. Awesome. And you can see them on the screen, by the way, which I want to say this is a breakout moment for us. We just celebrated Pentecost. We're in the Pentecost season. So why not break out? Take steps in faith. This is about that. It's about being in the comfortable boat, right? Maybe we feel that analogy from being quarantined for so long and we want to get out and we see Jesus approaching in the water. So keep your eyes fixed on Christ and trust that he has given us the means to take steps we've never taken before eyes fixed on him to step on that water. So we're breaking out a little bit. Uh, instead of just being on the radio, you hear our voices right now. You can see our beautiful, lovely faces and maybe some images. If you go to ilovemyfamily.us and uh, you can see over Facebook Live and YouTube, of course, you'll be able to see the follow-up of this. But it's particularly fun seeing it live as we're interacting with our guests and have a little mercy on us as we take new bold steps in this arena of technology. But excited that you're with us. Mm-hmm. And um, by the way, just we're directing you to that place, I love my family.us. We're inviting you over the next seven weeks to commit your family to just 45 minutes every week to talk and pray. What's it all about? What's the why at the heart of this? To more deeply encounter Christ alive in our marriages and families. All of us stand to experience that great horizon of God's grace. As much as you've had an amazing family experience, or anything short of that, God wants to pour out so much more and requires us to cooperate and to say, yes, God. So take that step beyond your fears, beyond your awkwardness. Go to ilovemyfamily.us. That's what defines these two heroic couples and their families who are going to be doing this. Um, Already good, godly, faithful Catholics, but they're like us. We want more. We want to receive the fullness of what God wants for us. So we're going to be journeying over the next seven weeks and telling that reality story as we foray into this adventure of making our homes places of ever deepening encounter. So just to start off, Steph, why don't you share with us an exciting milestone in the Schleter family that took place this past weekend? So many of you, our dear listeners, kind of track with us in our family life. And so we're very blessed and uh, delighted and excited to uh, announce that our oldest daughter, Annie, got engaged this past weekend to an incredible um, man of God, Colin, mm. who both of them have actually been guests on our radio show a few times. Mm. So just an incredible, um, grace-filled couple days together with the Strouds and the Schleters and uh, just the prayer that that it was, like mm. every moment was a prayer. And something significant um, that I'm excited to share is just that the ring that uh, Colin used to propose to Annie uh, was actually my mom's engagement ring that Colin had made his own also working with the jeweler and really kept the integrity of it, but just felt very strongly that symbolic meaning of um, the foundation of family and mm. the foundation of faith and kind of a newness in that built upon it. So just very excited and blessed. So we ask you, our dear listeners, mm. to keep them um, in your prayers as they prepare for the great sacrament of marriage next May. And if you're at ilovemyfamily.us, specifically forward slash road trip, you'll see some of the images we're showing right now. Like photobombing. Like John Paul (laughs) epically photobombing Stephanie holding the beautiful ring of Annie's and her mom. And you all know the story some other time. So uh, here we are, Bishop uh, Rhodes. All right, we'll get on to this. All right, um, we are blessed to have our guests, and with no further ado, we are going to welcome them. Let's begin with the Beaties, my Woo-woo! beautiful sister, who is the youngest of seven of us kids, six older brothers. So right out of the gates, what heroism to be a daughter with six older brothers. But I'm very mm-hmm. delighted and proud of these guys and the great witness they've been to me throughout my life as a family, her and her husband, Phil, in Dublin, Ohio. So I don't want to steal your thunder. Give us the backstory of you guys. Who are you people? And then just share with us maybe a story over the past couple months of being quarantined, a fun family story if you have one. Lay it on us. I'm Rachel. And I'm Philip. And we have seven children, Genevieve, Bernadette, Isaac, Cora, Agnes, Beatrice, Blaze. Did I forget one? Agnes? Yeah. I think you got her. <laughs> Twice, but check, she's two times. Check. Oh. 
So um, I got lucky because I had six older brothers and then I had five girls to kind of make up for it. There you go. Um, yeah. How long have you guys been married? Almost 16 years. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Tell us the stories you shared recently that took place in the Beatty household to yeah. make fun use of the quarantine time. Well, Greg, it was funny, um, as you were setting this up, you said, uh, we should just dive right in to the sandbox. You thanked us for, um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you sure that's not some, uh, gr grave? Oh my. Is that a grave? We're looking at photos, by the way, right now at ilovemyfamily.us. We'll talk you through it if you're on the air, but if you went to the images that Phil's going to share, you see wow. a dug area that, I don't know, four feet by eight feet, as about long as three it's feet six deep. feet. <laughs> exactly. Continue so the book report, Phil. The idiom of diving into the sandbox, we actually literally did. did. Um, when I was a kid, I dug out a sandbox in our backyard, piled up the sand around the edges and lined it with a plastic uh, tarp. And I told Isaac about it, our son, he's 13 years old. And uh, of course he uh, had to outdo me. And, um, he <laughs> and uh, two buddies uh, from school who were also off for the summer. Um, they spent uh, a couple days digging this large pit in our backyard. It was kind of a Tom Sawyer moment. Like, awesome. I don't even know what his buddies got out of this. Like, painting the picket fence. He somehow got his friends, like, digging a pit full of mud for two days. <laughs> so the That's idea awesome. was to make a, a swimming pool. This is a homemade swimming pool in the backyard. We had temperatures in the high 80s uh, for the first time this summer here. So uh, the boys, yeah, cooled off by uh, playing in the water there. And the There we go. We... There it is. Wow. So That's the success. Through the lawn and the, uh, the house. That's awesome. Fabulous. Great story. Let's go to the Elmers. Who are you people? And share with us some fun, any fun stories over the, the past few months. Right. I'm Rachel Elmore. This is my husband, Jeff. We've been married for eight years and we have four children, Isaac, Malachi, Peter, who we call Rocky, and the fourth is on its way mm -hmm. in December. Yay, praise God. Yeah. So awesome. We, we had one funny story um, on Holy Thursday um, this year, obviously with the quarantine and all that stuff. Um, St. Joe Parish and Maumee did a uh, parking lot adoration. And so um, they brought the monsters out, they had everything set up, it was beautiful the parking lot. And we're sitting in our car, and if you can picture Zacchaeus in a tree looking down on Jesus, Picture our Buick Enclave with two kids hanging out the sunroof. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, awesome. And it's a it's a beautiful moment. It was, it was a mm. unique moment. It was a beautiful moment. And Rocky, our 18-month-old, was sitting on my lap. And he decided to give the horn a big honk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we just loused oh, down in our done, seats yeah. because all the cars around us looked over to see who's there. You have two kids look out the sunroof and another kid honk in the horn. That's great. So that was a, a good moment for us. I love it. So a shout out for the Elmores in the Toledo area. They are superstars, chiropractic extraordinaires. Amazing, amazing. And you know, amazing. you know, we talk about Opus Dei, the word literally means the work of God. And we're called to see God glorified in all that we do, to recognize he's not just limited to a church, but literally the word ecclesia means to break out defines what we're meant to do, right? No matter what we're doing, it ought to be an occasion mm -hmm. of giving God glory. And so we ain't really encountered the Elmores as we encountered God. I'm not going to elevate your heart. But I will. Instruments of God's grace and the stories that are told of people who have availed themselves to their wonderful, called ministry service, is uh, is just really remarkable. So I just want to give a shout out to them right up front, Turning Point Chiropractic yep. and uh just the great joy and delight that they bring to so, so many people. We got to get that out there. And um, again, Turning Point Chiropractic, check it out. Amen. Yes. Now, with no further ado, we are going to go through just briefly, what is this Live It Gathering Guide all about? And just let me make a prefatory comment. You like that word, prefatory? I was say, these words. It actually is a word, You guys prefatory. just start listing over the next seven weeks new vocabulary words, and he might give you a quiz at the end, but half of them, just so you know, won't be in the dictionary. I think prefatory is a legit word, though. But anyways, so <laughs> no, let, let's face it. Um, we image the Trinity. <clears throat> our very nature is God, who is love. And our fulfillment revealed in Jesus is what? To sacrifice ourselves for the good of other. When do we experience the greatest joy in our lives? It's when we're laying down our lives, right? It's when we're thinking of the good of another. It literally invites us to get out of ourselves. I'll use the word transcend. You know that word. Thanks. Transcend ourselves. <laughs> 
don't mean to patronize, <laughs> transcend ourselves and experience that connection beyond ourselves, that is the gift made possible particularly in marriage and family life. And in this world of devices, let's face it, we all have them, we all struggle with them, but devices can become divisive and we lose that intimate connection with one another. So this is a bit of a supply to that need to make the time. You wouldn't think you have to make the time like 30 decades, 30 decades ago, three decades ago, but we really do need to say, are we connecting? We know we may pray the rosary, we may, pray novenas and all that is wonderful and the, the richness of our church, certainly the sacraments, but are we living that holy community that flows from a holy communion? So we encourage you to make that time once a week to talk and pray and we provide, to make it easy, a live it gathering guide. What is that? Go to ilovemyfamily.us. Based upon Sunday readings, it's fun questions and now I'm going to have Stephanie kind of walk us through this. If you go to ilovemyfamily.us, again, not necessary that you get online and see this because we will talk you through it. But right now, on the screen at massimpact.us, I'll say ilovemyfamily.us, you will see the Live It Gathering Guide. We have a group edition and a family edition and it's really just one page descriptive and Steph, why don't you just walk us through quickly what these wonderful heroic couples with us, and we invite all of you to join us, are going to be doing for seven consecutive weeks. Okay, so this is just a very quick overview, but um, one of the most important things is just to kind of establish three simple rules that we have actually seen really become also tools of formation. Mm -hmm. So the first one is just love, right? Simple, but not always so simple. Um, just really declaring that this time is meant um, to respect others, don't interrupt, listen with real interest and eye contact and encouragement. Um, just again, what does it mean to love each other in mm. that way as you are gathering? Again, interruptions, no, nope, you know, just mm. listening, challenge. all those things, which even for adults, I think can be a real challenge. We like to put it off on the little ones, mm. um, but I'm, I know I break that rule. <laughs> Quite often. She even has a pause button, I another do, story, another I do. time. So again, establishing that from the get-go and time and time again, repeating it, you know, mm. and it really does help in the formation, especially of little ones. So rule the, number one, to love. There are three rules here. The second one is environment. Just a real practical thing of making it a special place for that special time. So whether that means, you know, lighting a candle or moving to a different place, um, that you don't normally use for things or establishing, <laughs> oh my, um, you know, just a, a sacred environment and what that means. Sometimes it means um, for some families, they make it a time of a special treat, whatever that is, a beverage or a snack or um, anything that, you know, kids might get excited or adults might get excited about. And, um, you know, and especially those of you with, I mean, the, the parents usually have phones, but if you have teens or whatever, it's not a place at all for any sort of mm. devices, you know, turn it off, remove it so that those aren't distractions. So as much as you can set the environment to be a special sacred area with no to little distractions, because we'll bring our own. Um, and the third one is so important. Also, make it your own. Um, this guide is exactly that. It's just a guide. Uh, you know, you can choose to do bits and pieces of it in one setting. You can kind of spread it out really through the week, mm -hmm. you know, at the dinner table or in the car mm -hmm. or whatever. We've had different families who just have real little ones and they've chosen to use a kid's Bible, you know, for the Bible, for the gospel reading that week or, you know, incorporate different saint stories into it or whatever. So it is really important um, to remember that this is a guide and to, you know, do what works best for your family how it works best for your family. And what's most important is just that commitment of showing up and um, the discipline of doing it and whatever it looks like best for your family. So this three simple rules, again, love the environment and making it your own. Um, so the next part of it is uh, family fun questions. So, you know, just to kind of break the ice a little bit and get some conversation going. I'm going to actually put on the spot right now, Rachel, pick a question from you have to declare the one Rachel. to fifty. We have two I'd say, beautiful okay, Rachels. Rachel Schleter. Then I'll have Rachel Elmore you answer Rachel too. Beattie? Rachel Beatty. Sorry, she's my beautiful <laughs> sister, Rachel <laughs> Beatty. Sorry, married, Phil. I changed my name. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel <laughs> Beatty. What a woman. Pick a number from one to fourteen. All right. 
I'm going to say lucky 13. Okay, by the way, it's a lightning round. Answer these in 15 seconds or less. What I most okay. like about my home is? Little spaces set apart for the kids. So like a play area, a little prayer area, a little table for the kids to play games. So it just, it's always cluttered, but it always feels full of life and interest of whatever we happen to be doing in the moment. Awesome. 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 Rachel Elmore, pick a number one to 14, and you can't look at the questions on the screen. 11. 11. Steph? What really makes me happy is... This guy, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, I knew it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Great answer. Phil, pick a number, one to 14. Uh, 28. All right, oh. one to 14. There's an engineer speaking. Pick one to 14. He can give you 28. He's in the hypothetical universe. Two. Two. The best cereal ever is? Captain Crunch. Oh, love Captain Crunch. You're not listening, Dr. Jeff. Yeah. Mr. Whole Health Man. Don't judge him. Anyways, Jeff, pick a number, one to 14. Uh, six. What people really like about me is? I'm the baby of the family. Everybody loves everything. About <laughs> I love it. Great answer. That's awesome. Great answer. So that's just a sampling. Again, there are actually 50. The first chunk of them are directed more towards, you know, younger kids or whatever, which we have here, right? That's why we hearts. picked one to 14. Um, so it really just gets it going. And for some families, when they start out doing this, they just do those fun questions mm -hmm. because it's such a new experience just to gather in that way and converse and, you know, kind of establish some sort of foundation in that way. Um, and then the next part of the guide is what many people consider their favorite part, and that's the daily questions. Mm. And these are ones that, again, we encourage you to make it a part of your actual gathering in some fashion, but these are things that you can do throughout the day, throughout the week. Driving at, the car. Right, at, at the night. table, just as you're taking a walk, whatever. And so they are basically five things, something you're grateful for, a recent victory, a challenge, an affirmation of somebody of someone, or something meaningful happening, um, you know, that may have happened that day, or something that's going on. So you can pick one of them. Sometimes, you know, in different time limitations, we'll just pick one or two. But those are basically the five things that really you get to know each other mm. in a in a crazy cool kind of way, which you would be surprised, especially again, listeners with older kids or whatever, um, things that you would think that would be shared pretty naturally, but but aren't. And it's really teaching them a language to be able to do that. So a gratitude, a victory, a challenge, an affirmation, and something meaningful. And then moving along in the guide, the next part is apologies. Before diving into the meat of the guide of the prayer, it's so good mm. just to get any apologies out of the way, whether it's between spouses, um, you know, the kids, but just to encourage an environment of apology. So if there's something that somebody did, you know, just to clear it out right there, I'm sorry that I was impatient with you or, you know, how I reacted wasn't very honoring or, and it's neat to hear as families do this with younger kids, how easy it becomes mm -hmm. and how they uh, encourage each other <laughs> to apologize a little more readily as these weeks go on. But again, the, um, the whole point in doing it first is to clear out the mm -hmm. junk. So you can and then, receive the grace. Yes. Yep. And then also, too, something that's part of that is not just those immediate apologies, but if there's something that somebody did that they're not aware of, um, it's a time for that, too. So our kids mm -hmm. range in age from 22 to 15. So for us, it's a little easier to say, is there something that somebody has done um, that hurts you that they're not aware of mm -hmm. that needs apology. And so again, just building that communication and that relationship of reconciliation is amazing how the Lord works in that. So that would be apologies. You can do an opening prayer, light your candle, do whatever. We do have an opening prayer listed um, on the guide, but you can do your own. Um, and then there's always each week a little live it video, which kind of has um, archived our children's growing up <laughs> a little bit. Those are our home videos anymore. So sometimes they're cheesy, sometimes they're a little more serious, um, but I think always dear, but I am gonna say that because I'm the mom yep. and I can. Um, so just to kind of incorporate a message from that week's gospel. Mm -hmm. So you can view that as a family, which kids tend to enjoy. And then you go right into um, 
the readings for the upcoming Sunday. So they're listed there. Some families choose to pick one, you know, just the gospel or, you know, the first reading or whatever. And then there's always questions that come along with that. So, you know, the basic one for each of the readings is something that struck you, inspired you, something that raised a question, um, struck you, challenged you, inspired you, what questions did it raise? Um, And that, you know, can kind of, depending upon the reading, be more difficult or less difficult. With little ones, again, we said this at the beginning, sometimes it's neat to kind of retell it in your own words or pull Mm. out a children's Bible or, you know, whatever works best for your family and kind of go from there. So there's that personal reflection question, and then it moves out to um, a life application, if you will, or seeing it outside of yourself, but as we're called you know, to go out of ourselves, especially after Pentecost here, you know, very mindful of that. Like, how can we live this out in the world? And then there's a, uh, with each reading, there's also um, something that you can do to go around and affirm mm-hmm. each other. Very powerful. And, which can be very powerful, even for little ones, you know, to be more mindful of how, for example, you know, Jesus is seen in that person in a specific way or give you an example. Here's the one for this Sunday going around affirm a prominent way you've seen each person bear the gospel. How awesome for us to hear from our children uh, an affirmation of how we bear the gospel to them or for them to hear us say to each one, no matter what age they are, you know, little Isaac, gosh, I saw the gospel alive in you when you did this. This is an important gift that we're given in our families to declare the, the God-like nature that they have that helps them to form their identity. Okay. So again, going through those. And then um, sometimes, you know, again, depending how far you get into it, but it's very easy at some point, whether it's during this time, but uh, to make a commitment together, like what's, you know, maybe mm-hmm. it has to do with the challenge that was shared or something like, what is something that we're going to commit that I'm going to commit to this week that I'm going to ask you guys to help me with? Maybe it is to be more patient. Maybe it is to speak words of life, more of affirmation, but just to really, um, you know, declare something. Cause sometimes it's so easy for us to go through all these fun things. And then it's like, okay, you know, next time I'm mm-hmm, out of here, mm-hmm. you know, whereas the point of it is to grow more and more deeply, right. And grow in virtue and as a family. And um, so that commitment, and then to, you know, do some sort of closing prayer together. So that's kind of it in a nutshell, again, make it your own, do it how it fits best with your family, break it up in different segments. Um, but that's kind of the nutshell of it. And you can find that again at ilovemyfamily.us. So we are not meant to be just spectators. And tell me that's not a challenge for many of us Catholics, that we grew up knowing the truth. We were catechized. We have our powerful events and our retreats. But the biggest challenge is, do we see how we are participants in this ultimate drama all the time? And what this guy does, if it's done well, if you're faithful to it, is it forms our mindset that all of life is a participation in life, death, resurrection, and the Pentecost of Jesus Christ. That literally, we are in all that we do walking in a mindfulness of Christ. So just as an example, if we do those daily questions every day, What's a struggle? Well, we're tapping the ways in which we need to die in Christ. Struggles. What's a victory? We're we're proclaiming ways in which he's been victorious in our lives. When we declare that challenge at the end, you know, how awesome to know week after week that we're growing over time, that our homes are literally saint-making contexts, saint-making machines, and that we experience a mission-orientedness. And we get mission with sports, right? What coach doesn't get the end goal for sports? We think about that with business, right? What's the end goal with our business? If we ask the question, what's the end goal, the purpose of marriage and family? It's to become the most we're meant to be, which is unity in the Trinity to be made saints. This guide has the purpose of putting the grace of the church in front of us, but we got to do our part. And so we're challenging you again, live it, gathering God. If you go to ilovemyfamily.us, it's what these wonderful couples are about. They're joining us in this journey of seven weeks to say yes to this. And with that, we're going to now shift to them because they're really the reason we're all here to hear a little bit more about their backstory. Because if we're going to be with them the next seven weeks, maybe helpful us to kind of understand maybe where they come from. And particularly, we're going to kind of quickly, they'll share their backstory 
But who, who of us do not want to hear the drama like Pac-Man? They're separate and then they meet. And those of you who are younger have no idea what I'm talking no, about. So Pac ignore Pac-Man's back. Pac-Man's back. Like okay, Atari, well, they yeah. meet. Yeah. So we want to hear the dramatic story, especially if there's disagreement and discrepancy. We want sparks here. It's a Pentecostal season. So let's begin with the Beaties. Awesome that you guys are with us. And uh, just share with us a little bit of your backstory and the how you met. And okay, so officially we met at a... We were college students and we both volunteered at like a charismatic conference with the high schoolers. So each of us um, were helping out with the high schoolers. And then we kind of shared a friend group and we would just kind of see each other occasionally. So it, we were friends for a long time before we actually started to date. So when we dated, people would ask us, how did you meet? And I would, of course, start telling them we met at this conference. And I finally noticed that Philip was very quiet every time I told people. And one night he said, I completely do not remember meeting you at that conference. <laughs> <laughs> it was a day with, you know, we had 50 other new people. It's okay, room. Phil. It's okay. And, <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so, nice. so it was not love at first sight. However, we started dating and maybe a couple dates into our relationship. I went to his house and we went for a run and we were going to watch a movie. So I took a shower and I had left my ring there on the counter. So uh -huh. later he gave me back the ring. No big deal. Good tactic. So a couple years later, when he proposed to me, he gave me, you know, presented me this engagement ring. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I said, how did you get this size? So <laughs> I explained that, uh, that I had traced the size of a ring that she had forgotten. Wow. That day. Okay. Uh, I just, I just knew that I wow. was attracted to her and she had a qualities awesome. of, a, of a wife that I definitely wanted. So, so then I, was, I, I was hopeful of that, of course. And, uh, and I wanted to make sure he didn't have like a file cabinet of the ring sizes. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's and awesome. He just, he, and he still has the little card with my ring. Oh, that's Gosh. awesome. I love it. I so, love like, it. I have to ask a question, maybe the more yeah. female question. I sometimes so have more feminine it. sensitivities <laughs> from Steph. Um, when was the, like, mutual sparks moment? Do you recall when you guys had the DTR, define the relationship talk, and you're like, hey, this mm -hmm. is what we see it? You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the us talk? I yes. Think where, yeah, defining the relationship. It was uh, on our parents' driveway. Right, um, right next to the pine trees. Uh, Conviction. Is that what you're getting at? Well, yeah. he was such a like definitions dude that I think maybe I brought it up, and then like right away he's like, "Oh, so this is going to be that talk," and I'm like, "That kind of ruins it, right?" <laughs> right. I, I just want to have a talk about it, but yeah, because we had known each other as friends for yeah a couple of years at that point, so um, yeah, so it was. Uh, that was a big turning point, as it's meant to be, I guess. Turning point. See, we're going to get it in there every <laughs> time awesome. we can. That's awesome. So it, am I allowed to throw something in? Of course. Yes, okay. me. So yes, well, I don't dear. know our time frame here. So I do remember um, both of you volunteering or, you know, oh, yeah. forced, forced volunteering um, to help with one of our youth events back in Erie, Pennsylvania. Wow. And Phil, I just remember you sitting at the on the, the big open grassy area, and I was like, why doesn't Rachel connect with him? What the heck? And so we loved Phil right away. We were glad when it happens. So, so backstory, which I'm just filling in. Rachel, of course, our family, seven beautiful parents, Catholic wait, faith wait, and family. Wait, seven beautiful yeah. parents. Did I say seven parents? <laughs> wow. Okay, it took them for me and all the other had the. Um, <laughs> no, just uh, seven children and my parents. Definitely passionate about their Catholic faith doing that weird thing early on of praying from the heart along with the beautiful traditional anchoring of our Catholic faith in the 70s and 80s even, but very blessed. Not perfect, but uh, challenges, but very blessed. And Phil, actually coming from a really awesome Catholic family also, maybe we can get to this some other point down the road, but grew up in that really kind of uh, interesting concept people aren't familiar with of Catholic charismatic community, which was a profound basis for his own formation and blessing. And so for Phil to come into our family was just, he added a lot and blessed us a lot. And we're so grateful. He, I, I'm ashamed to admit it. So I'm just going to get this out there. Six sons my dad has. Who does he turn to when something breaks down? 
Phil. <laughs> Not one of us. <laughs> Phil is the go-to man. Phil is the one who gets the call. And uh, anyways, very awesome. Hey, a word of advice, prominent words of advice, either together, each of you, for a couple right now, it is that season of romance, love is in the air, spring, whether they're dating or engaged, what's a prominent bit of advice from your years of marriage? Rats, I thought you were going to give us advice when you oh. said that. Okay. <laughs> nope. It's all you. <laughs> it's so important with all the kids around to be intentional about the time to take all discussions sort of away from the kids. Serious discussions, tense discussions, mm. and really learning this. Like, don't do that in front of the kids. And then we can have much better discussions. In fact, it helps to not do it right then because we can sort of calm down and think out what we're going to say too. So it helps in many ways to just like wait and make sure you walk up the steps, you know, and take a little breather or walk to another room. So I love your honesty with that. And I mm -hmm. can confer, uh, agree confer. with you that I haven't been, or we haven't necessarily been very successful in really understanding what they're capable of apprehending at young ages or teenagers. So no, thank you for that piece of advice that there are adult conversations, a time and a place that we need to hold sacred and, uh, and maintain separate apart from them. Great advice. Okay, who's ready for the Elmore backstory? I, I know am. I am. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Lay it on us, guys. Okay, so as far as meeting, we have two two separate stories. And we want to hear them both. <laughs> <laughs> Do we get to vote on which one we think is more accurate? <laughs> or more fun? I swear we met in a like motion palpation club at chiropractic school where you practice feeling different parts. And he That's was great. A pink sweatshirt that said Palmer, our school. And I have the same pink sweatshirt, right? I would choose pink, but he was wearing it too. <laughs> and I was like, you know, it was my turn to go around the circle and meet him and practice on him. I was like, that's a really cool sweatshirt. I have to do it at home. <laughs> but he does not think that's how we met, but it was. Well, that is a true story. That did happen, but it's not the first time. Says we he. were in the um, cadaver lab. Oh, that's there's, even better. <laughs> Everybody meets in a cadaver lab these days. The so it's a practice test, and there's a head on top of the table, and inside the head there's a tumor. And you had to identify the tumor and all this stuff. And, and it's just a practice test, and I was not prepared for it. And she sits down at the desk next to me. And I look over at her, and I said, do you think this is what killed him? And she looked at me, and she... she Covered up. She looked at my paper and saw that nothing was filled in. She flipped her hair and she was probably. What a good girl. It was a practice test, but she's covering her paper. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. But really, um, Jeff actually did chase me for about a year um, before we started dating. I really wanted a cat. Polish, Michigan State Spartan, and he was 0 for 3. <laughs> yeah. So, but. Yeah, so I was, I was a proud Protestant, and uh, I, I can't do anything about my heritage. I wasn't Polish, and uh, I'm not going back to Michigan State. Um, so Rachel was president of a uh, chiropractic group, the St. Raphael Catholic Fellowship. Um, it's the Patriot Saint of Chiropractors. And um, they were holding a Theology of the Body conference in one of the local parishes. And so we sit in class studying anatomy and physiology all day long. I thought, well, why not theology? I went to a Christian college. I took theology courses, and, and I would just love to hear what they had to say. And uh, my, my mind was blown. You know, I went into it like an anatomical, physiological like, you know, back, right. background because of our training, and we understood like why. And it was like, mm. oh, <laughs> this opens up. This answers a lot of questions for me. That's beautiful. So that was my turning point was her, her um, introducing me to that. That's beautiful. That's, I love it. That's awesome. JP2, we love you. Before you guys give us your advice, share with us just briefly your respective backgrounds and coming to embrace this Catholic faith that we share, this beautiful gift. Yes. So, you know, when we talk about the, the theology of the body, you know, Rachel and I, we got engaged. Um, we were in our marriage prep course. Um, we we came from different backgrounds. So I come, I came from a, a relationship where um, absence was not practiced. Contraception was used and it wasn't talked about. It wasn't a, a thing. And we're coming to meet Rachel who is waiting for marriage and mm -hmm. put that fourth caveat in there. I'm a <laughs> Polish Catholic Spartan and I'm, I don't want to wait for 
marriage. <laughs> and, um, but after going through the theology of the body, it, it just made so much sense to mm-hmm. us and, and the church's teaching. And so Rachel and I, um, a lot of our faith background comes off of natural family planning mm-hmm. and the, the building of that and our relationship with each other. And um, one of the interesting things was, so the, the couple's up there, they're talking about their NFP. They hold up a picture, family portrait of all their 12 kids. And I'm like <laughs> sweating, like sliding down the chair. No way, you know. And, uh, and we took the course and learned a lot about the actual anatomy and physiology, how it works. And, and um, so we went through the course. We loved it. Um, we had great success using NFP. Um, but the prep work from it. Um, so we were planning our wedding and we could see that based on the charts that Rachel's um, peak day was going to be on our wedding night. And we had a lot of this background chart. because we had just talked about our practice and where we were at. Oh, yeah. I mean, we weren't ready to be responsible parents yet. We were eating cans of soup, but we knew that, you know, we wanted to wait. So you called our teachers and she... She gave me the worst answer. I said, oh my gosh, it's our peak now. We can't be responsible parents. What do we do? And she goes, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm a black and white guy. I want a yes or no. And she said, pray about it. <laughs> like, oh, come on. Like, give, give us some guidance. You know, we need something more than that. And so once we realized, you know, we waited three years, what's three more days mm. going to be to wait? Epic. Um, Epic is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but and, and I think that I think that that's where our faith, you know, where our, our, our background, our story comes. It's just mm. that decision right there. You know, right. the decision to, to wait three three years, but then, okay, okay, here's the, the, the apex of it. Oh, wait, three more days. And um, from that moment on, just blessed. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so awesome. Give us your advice. Great stories from the Beatties and the Elmores, their backstories and embracing the gift of this Catholic faith and married and with children now. And if you'd be seeing them, you you would see what you hear over radio. That's delight. That's joy. We know that's not all the time. We know we struggle with things, but I know both of these couples to know that their core, that foundation is one of just delight and joy. But I hate to say maybe too many couples are missing because they're battling with the gospel of the world They're or cutting corners. And these are two couples that have come to embrace that even though we are imperfect, even though we struggle in many ways, we have this gift of truth revealed in Christ. And you heard some of that truth mentioned, the most challenging truth about sexuality, about marriage, about children. And hopefully over the next seven weeks is you hear us share and you're hopefully on the journey who are listening or watching, watching, watching with us. Um, hopefully, you know, we're discovering this deep desire we have for fulfillment. God is pouring it out, but we got to receive it. Mm-hmm. And typically it involves this very simple idea of surrendering lesser things for greater. As you're listening to us, we hope over these seven weeks, maybe you're challenged or confronted with an area in your life, as I am all the time, of something I'm clinging to with my white knuckles, whatever that may be, and hear God say, let it go. Hear God just say, you know, let let it go and trust in my promise of this abundant life. John 10, 10, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. So we're blessed you're with us. You're with Greg and Stephanie Schleter, a season five of the Family Road Trip podcast. Again, mm-hmm. listening over the radio and watching at ilovemyfamily.us forward slash road trip, Facebook and YouTube. And it's a seven week journey putting that flag in the sand, taking the time to talk and pray, not just for those 45 minutes or whatever, but that it's like, you know, the the Ten Commandments where Moses puts his staff in the water and takes territory. Same thing. This will start taking territory. You will start to experience streams of living water flowing that, or that were already flowing. They'll flow even more. So now we want to get to uh, maybe ask the questions. Yes, Steph. Did you get the advice? Oh, we didn't get the advice. Thank you. I got the advice from you to be quiet and listen. <laughs> and maybe advice to get yes, the advice. Yes, thank you. Elmore's advice for those romantically involved. Best advice. Well, I'll, I'll start and then you can yeah. add yours on to it. So what I think is in the worldview that we have is that we're looking for partners out there that we can go 50-50 with. Mm-hmm. And it's not about 50-50. It's about 100-100. Mm-hmm. And in our relationship, it's, it's giving each person 100% of yourself um, instead of going half and half. Mm-hmm. And another one we were discussing is um, I try to outserve him, mm. and then he tries to outserve me, and then it's just this constant awesome. flow of trying to outserve each other, <laughs> and and you know it's almost we're really competitive, <laughs> <laughs> so we yes. can get really competitive about it. It's a good um, competition. Like, beauty to it, too, so. yeah. outserve, outserve each other. So you're doing the dishes, and you just he pushes you away lovingly, and I got that for you, honey, <laughs> kind of thing. 
<laughs> or the baby at 2 a.m. in the morning, these wonderful moments of love. No, I got it. I got it. <laughs> I got no, it. <laughs> that's, that's really awesome. Um, Beautiful. Thank you. So let's, let's go to now, um, as we're setting the stage for these seven weeks, it's good. And before we set out on any journey to kind of consider two big questions, maybe one is what might be a challenge um, as you endeavor to make a commitment every week to 45 minutes talking and praying. So question one, what might be a challenge that you anticipate facing personally, maritally, and maybe in your family? Then the next part of that is what do you hope to gain if you are faithful to this over seven weeks? What kind of blessings and graces do you think God might want to pour into you personally, marriage, and family? Let's start with the Beaties. I think a challenge might be the, the different ages we have mm-hmm. and, of course, personalities in uh, right. discussing, uh, being able to sit there for, for the length of time and, and discuss. And I'm looking forward to, um, it's a structured, you know, format and everyone gets their turn. So those who are more uh, boisterous among our children, you know, will have to wait their turn. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm hoping that there'll be a gain in respect for one another and mm-hmm. to make it, you know, outside of this, um, the family live it guide, outside of this time together, it'll be easier for them to, to uh, give way to one another. Awesome. Yeah. And I guess I think when I look at my children, some of them are much more inclined to to share, like they don't hesitate to share personally what they're struggling with or what they want to work on. But there are others in our family who everything's sort of like, they just want to toss out an answer that's funny or something to kind of brush off. So obviously there's no way we're going to be able to make a couple of our kids who are more inclined to just like give some quick brushing off Mm -hmm. answer. But I'm just kind of praying that this will be a really good opportunity for them I'm sure they want to be heard. Like they have these deep parts of themselves that I'm sure they're not like sharing with other people at this point. So this is going to be like, I'm just praying that the Holy spirit will work in them, that they can feel safe Mm -hmm. to both listen to other people and hear their hearts and to feel that they can like step up and Mm -hmm. share a little bit more deeply or more truly about themselves and not just kind of make everything like a joke. So those are great. That's awesome. Let me press you further. What do you, maybe anticipate it will be a challenge for you guys personally and along the other side of the coin is, you know, what do you hope to personally gain? How do you personally hope to grow at the end of seven weeks? Challenge is making the time. Um, you know, it's, uh, at the end of the day, 45 minutes doesn't sound like a, a lot, but, uh, uh, things pile up. So mm-hmm. yeah, carving out the time. And, uh, I think for us, I kind of, I feel like we're we're both like very flexible people and open to new ideas. So I feel like we, we're doing all kinds of different styles of prayer. Sometimes we'll mm-hmm. pray the rosary. Sometimes we'll pray like personal prayer, but we're not the most committal. You know, like it's kind of sometimes we do this and sometimes we don't. So I think that we're going to benefit greatly from actually like making it a point to do this very specific form of prayer, kind of like you were talking about and committing to that form. Mm-hmm. And the other kinds are great. It's great to pray in the moment too, but um, just all of us being disciplined, like you said. Awesome. That's awesome. I will say that for me in doing this, Steph and I have done this, has really been part of our culture for going on 23 years of marriage this month. And from the very beginning, from praying over the moment we knew that we conceived this beautiful child that God gave us. And uh, early on, you guys do this also, praise and worship in our home and foster that relational quality. I'll say as they get older and you have the older kids, gosh, when they feel validated, number one, just that their voice matters and it counts. And sometimes it takes a little bit of a struggle to to convey that I really want to hear you. I really want to hear your wisdom. The second part of that is God speaks so often to me uh, through my children in whatever they're reading in scripture or whatever their prayer life is. And I genuinely, it it takes some time for me sometimes to convey them the degree to which I really am receptive to God speaking to me through them, that the the roles shift a little bit. I'm the parent. Yes, Steph's the parent, but God has endowed them with the kind of wisdom. And when they know that, it's amazing how that translates into them having a life, if you will, of, hey, God uses me instrumentally. So I'm just encouraging you to anticipate how you're going to be blessed as a dad and a mom, husband and wife, by the wisdom in your kid, which I know you already are because we know some of those stories, but this just opens up that horizon. But I would add, um, not to contradict you, just to 
Please uh, do. <laughs> no, but I think, and even in our experience, that no matter how young, they need to know that their voice is important and, and feel that. And, and also, I mean, how many times when our kids were little mm. or when we've done this guide with other families, how we've been blown away by the wisdom that comes out of the littles, you know, mm -hmm. mouth with, that is so anointed. So it's, it's a both and, not an either or. Um, looking to the next seven weeks, what's going to be a challenge for you guys? And what do you hope graces you'll gain at the end of the seven weeks? Well, I was really reflecting on me personally, you know, what, what struggle this is going to be. And I think it kind of comes down to perfectionism. Mm -hmm. Like I want this every moment why we do this. I want it to be holy and grand. It's so special for my family. When I have a five, three and one year old, you know, if I lit a candle, they're trying to blow it out. And right. Like, oh, you know, like, <laughs> right. This is a yes. holy moment that mom's getting edgy about. You yeah. know? So <laughs> I'm like, trying to find the, you know, grace for myself to say, well, if I'm doing this all for God and God's perfect, then whatever moment we have, is perfect, you know, because it's mm. all for him. Um, as for as far as us, it kind of translates into us. You know, I'm like, no, we need to read this out of the Bible. And he's like, well, it's printed right here. Let's just read it on the sheet. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> right. So I think we'll clash, but compliment each other. Mm. Like, just, he lets me be re more relaxed about it. Yeah. But so, so balance comes into there. And then also, when we first started this, we sat down and we told the boys what we were going to do. And Malachi kind of looked at us and said, oh, is this just mom and dad talking? And it was kind of like, oh. this, <laughs> mom and dad have a lot of conversations. If you were in the kitchen, you guys need yeah. to go somewhere else. And and so we, we want to incorporate them more, get them speaking from their heart more. But then we started it, and he interrupted us the first three words out of our mouth. <laughs> yeah. and he so there's, there's validity to us feeling like we're interrupted when we're having conversation. Mm. But there's also validity to us kind of pushing them aside so we can have a conversation. Right. So yeah, we would right. really like to grow as a family more and to be able to talk and respect people's boundaries and get their thoughts out. It's so good. Um, and starting at a young age, you know. So good. That's really awesome. awesome. So a lot of things that could be said, we'll let them kind of play out over the next seven weeks. But um, I do think the complementarity is a huge mm -hmm. gift that husbands and wives today maybe have lost. Like typically it's in the form of the mom who is more often than not at home with the children or spends more time with them and becomes the spiritual leader. And often the dad, maybe he's fine with that. Hey, I get to do my work thing and I get to come home and I don't really need to lead. She does that holy stuff. But a dad's heart by God's design is meant to lead and is meant to bring some some uh, thoughtfulness and to, to set uh, an atmosphere there. Um, and children will, as we know with all the stats, will tend to go the course of the dad. We all have heard the stats. We're approaching Father's Day and biblically, but even outside of the pages of scripture, we see sociologically, whether you're agnostic, atheistic, Jewish, Muslim, Vulcan, Hobbit, whatever you are, there's something built into the human spirit to follow the course of the dad. If a mom's not in the game entirely, but a dad is in the game, there's a 70% plus chance that the kids will be engaged in the faith if the dad is. And the mom's not even in the picture. On the other hand, if the dad is MIA, if the dad is missing in action, um, it's going to be a situation where uh, it's only two or 3% chance the kids are going to continue in their faith if the dad is out of the game. So yeah, dads need to also with that Ephesians 5 ennoble their spouses, um, need to listen to the wisdom and to have that conversation of how best do we create this atmosphere of greater love with our children. Elmore, as you guys keep coming in and out, which is okay. It's a magic okay, act. I get it. It's yes, they're not like chiropractors. They're magicians. Elmore, Houdini, <laughs> you know? Uh, I just encourage people, you know, make it yours. Make it your own, like Stephanie said in the rules. There we try to do every bullet point with a five, three, and one-year-old. And a little bit at the end, we're like, okay, this is kind of worn out. Next yeah. night, we streamlined it, and, and we picked and chose things, yes. and it went much smoother. So make awesome. it your own. Make it your family. I think when you... You know, have a little crack to let God in. Like I just cannot wait to see what's going to happen awesome. right now. Amen. And the and the depthness I've already seen from my kids come out yeah. with questions. I, I'm just really excited. So awesome. Love the expectant faith there. Oh, I noticed how many times you used the word awkward when you were like emailing us about the program and then and then hmm. trying to get us. And I was like, did he do that because of us? <laughs> <laughs> no. Honestly. No. Uh, 
Yeah, no, I just think it's a word that we hear 95% of the men yeah. in particular and women is it's awkward if you've never done this to bring your kids together and to say, okay, now we're going to formalize what normally should be organic, right? Like it yeah. should be all the time. And the reality is those who are listening right now are watching us and who are thinking that ask yourself the question, when's the last time you had a meaningful conversation that took you both deeper? Um, it's, it's too rare. And, um, you know, we ritualize things in our lives. That's really where a lot of this emerges from. We ritualize success again, business, sports, academics. We have a plan and we go at it. This is a bit of a, an, an endeavor to recover as we are ecclesia domestica, domestic church, to somewhat ritualize the meaning of our homes that our kids, what, at the end, that when they leave our homes, they, they only know a culture that is structured for success with the fluidity, with the naturalness, right? With that um, spontaneity and all that it ought to be, but that there's a kind of a skeleton in the midst of it that goes with the visceral, if that makes sense. So I just want to end too on um, words of encouragement to all of our listeners. And I, I keep coming back to something that our dear pastor, Father Adam Hertzfeld, which I believe I've shared before, but it, I don't think can ever be repeated enough. He spoke of um, the Great Commission. Mm. So before... You know, the Lord ascended to heaven and, you know, he gave the great commission. Therefore, go out and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And he made the point that, okay, Christianity, Catholicism has spread throughout the entire world, starting with such a small group. And he said, how did that happen? He said it began in the homes. That's where the great commission, how it grew and how we are at that time now. And so this is just a gift, I believe, a tool to do that. You know, all you need to do is look around and see the state of affair. As JP2 said, you know, um, so goes the family, so goes the world, right? And so we need to reclaim our domestic churches and reclaim that great commission and reclaim the souls that God has blessed us with and privileged us with raising and... Um, and just remember that, that this, our homes are meant to be these cultures of encounter with Christ in relationship with each other, to come to know, love, and serve God ever more deeply in the home so that we can go out and make disciples of all nations. And I think so often, um, with even the best of intentions, too many people start out there and instead of focusing on what's in here and what mm. we are so blessed to have as families, as couples. And so let's reclaim that great commission in the Ecclesia Domestica or Domestic Church and blessed to uh, journey with you these next seven weeks and trying to use this as perhaps an encouragement to get that going um, or to, you know, reinvigorate something. And we're just delighted and blessed. And we pray that the Spirit, you know, right after Pentecost here, that is alive and well in the church just descends upon your mm. marriages, your families, your homes to enable that to happen. You're awesome. I love you. Now that we have seven <laughs> kids, will you marry me? <laughs> sure. um, we're living in an era that we've never lived throughout history. We're just starting to get back to receive the grace of the sacraments that defines this moment and different governors saying different things, but basically wanting to recover a sense of quote unquote normalcy. But at the heart of this has been, let's face it, lack of the opposite of communion has been isolation. And uh, one day if folks are watching this video or hearing us, what we've seen emerge in the last three days has been explosive with riots taking place throughout this country that exhibit a lot of things, right? It's not simply the, the heinous uh, picture of what a police officer and others did, which needs to be described as extremely sad as what took place there. And certainly the reaction to that reveals what? Things hidden, things hidden in darkness are coming to light in the culture. And the heart of culture, as John Paul II says, the heart of humanity is marriage and family. Do we not experience in our uh, course of connecting and work and with people around us a yearning to maybe awaken to our, our nature, to who we are in God? I'm just yeah, blabbing, I think, at this point. We're good. I want to. Phil's looking you. off on the day. <laughs> Phil's got something to say. I saw him glancing into the light and epiphany coming well, to him. Greg, I, I want to thank you. you. You brought up the fact about fathers being involved in the faith or being examples to the children and within our domestic church um it's the this limit guide is quite a good tool mm. to um mm. you know as fathers were commanded to or as husbands to love our wives as the church 
lay our lives down for for our lives and um of course leading our children and our family to heaven mm -hmm. and to lead we have to be able to get there ourselves um this is so you, you hear that rhetoric within the church of you know how valuable it is for a father to, to spiritually lead the family and um for me it's been a question of yeah i know where i want to get to get to but with our family but don't know how to exactly mm. so this is a great tool to yes. um an instrument to to engage in those conversations to bring up the the way to the, the actual um valuable uh lessons that we can get from the sunday readings mm. and uh, uh so yeah i want to thank you really appreciate that awesome thank you phil thanks for your yes it's awesome any final words before we land this first episode of woo, season woo. five of the Family Road Trip podcast with the superstar Beaties uh, and uh, superstar Elmore is on this journey, seven week journey to more deeply encounter Christ, his great love for us in marriage and family and to make our homes that kind of culture, not just that awesome retreat that we are on, but that our homes are meant to be that ongoing retreat of, of knowing God's love for us. So any final comments? Well, I, I kind of wanted to say something. Um, I homeschool some of my children and there can be a sometimes pressure within that to uh, to take that job and look at your children as the product of how well you're doing. Mm. So I just wanted to say that one thing that um, this, I don't know, I'm a little confused about all the pandemic stuff right now. That That's a whole separate issue. And I know you were talking about that, but I just, all the worries that people have, and especially for us, like worries about our children and how they're going to do, um, I remember realizing that like we are raising our children, but like praying specifically for God to actually be the father to our children mm. and Mary to like be the mother, not just like help us do it, but actually like step mm. in and, and do that. Mm. So I guess I'm trying to say that like praying together is awesome, but also realizing that we have to remit some control and love some responsibility that. for our own children's choices. Mm. And just like, we just have to love them, pray with them and pray for them and unite as much as we can and then just really let the holy spirit like work in them and not assume that we have to be doing everything this perfect way mm -hmm. in order for things to turn out well like we give god the results we give god like the good things and the bad things and just let him like really be the one to work in the lives of our children mm -hmm. as well as in our own individual lives you know and then just that really when i think of that that helps me to not worry because actually every step when i've been worried I absolutely, and you too, we see how the Lord puts exactly what our kids need. He puts the people that they absolutely needed in their lives at that moment, and we could not have like planned anything any better than what he's doing every step mm. along the road. So He's he's good like good. that. Right. Yeah, awesome. He is. Awesome. Thank you, Rachel. It's beautiful. Awesome. So, folks, we are so, so grateful that you're along with us for the ride, the Family Road Trip Podcast. It's a reality program featuring... Us three couples, our special guests, the Beatties and the Elmores, who've heroic why? Because they've committed to making their homes places of ever deepening encounter with Jesus. And how are we doing that? Go to ilovemyfamily.us. They're committing to do this live it gathering with their families, range of ages between both of these wonderful families. And it's based upon the Sunday readings. This is all about receiving the grace that is being poured out in this Pentecostal season. So this is the first stop of the journey and we're so glad you're with us. And uh, we do hope that you do journey with us and do this with your family. We challenge you, we encourage you, know you're not alone. Whatever struggles you're having right now, God understands it, he sees it, he's walking with us. He says, I will be with you to the end of the age. What an awesome promise. If nothing else, if we could seize that promise and experience it, encounter it, create the atmosphere to live it. So God bless you all, we Thank love you. you. Thank you so much for being with us. Until next time, God Amen. bless.